We're going to take you from Kyiv to Munich now, where Christina Ruffini is, uh, where European countries are already feeling the effects of sanctions placed on Russia. So, Christina, thanks for joining us. I'm going to actually start with something that our Margaret Brandon said last night on the CBS Evening News. Let's play a little bit of, of what she had to say. What we know is that the war is already underway, and Vladimir Putin may be testing just how far he can go. He is already strangling Ukraine's economy. He is taking bites out of their territory. And so what happens next may determine how far he goes. What he knows is two clear things. No country in the world is going to send troops to defend his country, and that all of these sanctions hurt European economies. And there's also a bite back here at home with the United States. I mean, President Biden's already dealing with inflation at a 40-year high, and now oil is trading at $100 a barrel. All right, so let's address that point. You know, when we talk about sanctions and possibly even more sanctions coming in the future, there's a problem, there's an issue that European economies are linked and they are ca caught in the crossfire. Will the sanctions be enough, considering they're also going to have an impact on some European countries as well? Good morning, guys. You know, you have to balance that that bite that European consumers and to some extent American consumers could be feeling from these sanctions. I listened to interviews this morning on, on local media and the BBC with British lawmakers and German lawmakers, and both were kind of asked, you know, what is the what is the resoluteness of the European population if they start you know, if prices start going up at the grocery store, if, if gas prices here start skyrocketing. And they said, look, the, the people here know that they are too dependent on Russia for energy. And at some point, they're going to have to transition. So at least for now, they think that there will be public support, you know, for to hold Russia to account and to have these sanctions. It's, it's good in theory, but, you know, it's all about the economy, stupid. I mean, we have that in the U.S., and that holds all around the world. All these are elected officials. And if people start feeling the impact of that in their daily lives, whereas they're not necessarily going to be feeling the impact of Russia's military incursion in Ukraine. You know, that's not going to impact them here in Germany physically in their everyday lives unless they're seeing it uh, with prices. So it's a balancing act. I think for now there is support of these sanctions, mostly because there isn't a lot of appetite to go start a full-scale ground war with Russia. And to what was being said before, we'll have to see how far Russia goes. You know, these two breakaway independent republics, whatever you want to call it, Russia doesn't hold all of them, right? The Russian forces are only in kind of like the small third of the pocket. So the real question is, does Russia just grab what they hold and stay there, or do they push further into the rest of that pocket? And that's where the conflict is really going to be. It's unclear at this time that Putin has the troops or the resolve to kind of take over the rest of the country. He certainly doesn't want to get anywhere near Poland or any of the other NATO countries because that sparks a whole other issue. But he might feel like, given the lack of military resistance, at least from the U.S. and Europe, he has free reign to kind of take back control of these places. So if that triggers cascading sanctions, yes, it will punish Russia. Yes, it will punish Russian consumers. Yes, it will punish the oligarchs that it's trying to target and high-ranking officials. But it's also going to be felt by everyday Americans and everyday Europeans trying to go about their lives and fill up their cars. You know, just at the beginning of this week, we were talking about a possible meeting between Biden and Putin. Now the Secretary of State has canceled uh, the meeting that he had planned with his Russian counterpart. Is diplomacy still a possibility? Well, you know, that's why I'm still here in Munich, uh, because I was waiting to hop over to Geneva. And then uh, late last, late yesterday, late uh, our time, it, it was uh, Secretary Blinken had a press conference with the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Kuliba, and they said it is not the right time to have that meeting. However, both Kuliba and Blinken have said, you know, diplomacy is still an option. But what options are left, right? If they're not willing to meet, if they're not willing to talk. For the Ukrainians, Kuliba said, we are going to try every diplomatic measure to try to deal with this with Russia. And if diplomacy fails, we are going to fight for every square inch of Ukrainian territory. Now, that to me doesn't sound particularly promising. However, you never know. This is a, this is a, a series of events that have been very unpredictable and a lot of back and forth. There's always a chance at diplomacy. However, right now, um, I think the odds would be on that not happening in the near term. All right, Christina Ruffini, thank you very much.